You all remember a movie called Shazam with Sinbad playing a genie? Uh, you know what? The movie was never real. It was, uh, it, it's, the rumor started in 2009. I don't know where it came from, uh, but it's not real. All right, not real. Okay. From uh, 93 Chills on Twitter. 93 Chills. I know for a fact Sinbad was in a genie movie. I'm not tripping. No, nah, man, it was, it was never real. It was never. How old are these people, man? I mean, Carly Mersh? Carly. Dude, Sinbad was the f***ing genie. See, Carly? You know, God, I wish I knew you this would come out of that. Just tell you to your face. It right, never right. happened. You never saw it. You should go to rehab. From from Small Town Pete on Twitter? Small Town Pete. The best part is how Sinbad is the genie and he always comes out of the lamp. Remember? Okay, let's go with this. Yeah, man, that's one of my favorite movies, okay? I enjoyed doing that movie because I actually, actually, I was going through rehab at the time. And that's when I shot that movie because I needed cash for crack. I distinctly remember Edge of Tomorrow being a movie about Sinbad playing a genie. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow was that documentary they did about me after I came out of crack rehab because I was living on the edge of life. That's it. And I played a genie uh, with an attitude and I wore a thong. Remember that correctly? From Erica uh, 0207. Yeah, Erica, you're probably going to ask me about Shazam. Yeah, it was one of my favorite movies. You know what? And your parents probably watched it while they were getting high in the house. You sheeple may have already moved on, but I still think about the Sinbad Genie movie about nine times a day. You know, man, I hope your career dies. Cool, man. So tired. <laughs> For those who said, hey, you saw Suzanne when I was growing up, yeah, you, you did. You it, it, it did exist. It took a lot of government intervention to get those videos out of people's homes. It took a lot of government intervention to get those videos out of people's homes. It took a lot of government intervention to get those videos out of people's homes and out of the uh, video stores. Um, I'm lucky because I'm ex-military, ex-special forces. So we were able to do a lot of mind control stuff to get those videotapes away from people. We were able to do a lot of mind control stuff to get those videotapes away from people. We were able to do a lot of mind control stuff to get those videotapes away from people. There's three tapes left. There are three Shazam videos still out that we did not find. And if we find you, we're gonna kill you. And I just want you to know that. Um, I want you to be aware of that because I felt bad that that you didn't know you're on a hit list. And I'm I'm ashamed. I'm totally ashamed of that. But I'm just saying, if you have that Shazam video, you're on a short list to have an assassin come to your house. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not saying, hey, if you want to post it on, on Twitter or something, say, hey, I got the video. But that means your whole family's gone. And I'm just trying to put that out there because I, I feel bad. What's poppin' YouTube? It's the Hood Conspiracy Theorist, man, and I'm back with another video, man. We talking about the Mandela Effect. We gotta talk about it. This is a highly requested video, so I'm here to drop the facts, to provide the facts. First thing first, the clip that you just saw was Sinbad. For years, Sinbad denied playing the genie in a Shazam movie. He been denying it for years before he finally admit to playing the genie in the movie. So all us kids that grew up in the 90s, all the 90s babies, man, we know exactly what we saw. If you grew up in the 90s, you remember that genie movie. We all re remember Sinbad playing that genie. They trying to say that that movie never existed. It's like the movie was wiped completely from existence. It's like the movie don't even exist. If you Google the movie right now, Google the movie right now, 2022, Google go say the movie never existed. When you got people around the world, millions of people that testified to seeing that movie, they can describe to you the scenes from that movie. You even got a few people out here that has, oh, I seen a few people where they um posted the actual cassette tape from the movie. Now let's talk about what else he said. Notice he said it took a lot of government intervention to get the tapes out of people houses and out of stores. Remember I just said, it's like this movie was erased from history. It's like the movie don't even exist anymore. He said at his own mouth, 
it took a lot of government intervention to remove these videos out of houses and out of stores. He also said they did a lot of mind control in order to get the tapes away from people. So you got this man saying the government intervened with removing the tapes and also they used mind control to make people forget about the movie. And now when you go Google it and look online, the movie don't even exist. It's like the movie don't exist. But you got millions of people who remember seeing this movie with their own two eyes, remember it like yesterday. So what does that tell you? We living in a matrix, the Mandela effect, a parallel universe, because apparently that movie don't exist in this universe, in this time, in this reality. But everybody from the 90s, we remember that movie. So you ask yourself, What's really going on? Now, let's talk about this death threat he issued. He said it was three copies of the movie that they did not find. And if they find them, they're going to kill you. So what does that tell you? That speaks volume. Rather he was joking or not, you don't play about something like that. He says three copies that they did not find. Because notice before... He say the government stepped in and helped remove a lot of the movies from the people's houses. Then he said they also used mind control to make people forget about the movies. He said it was three movies that they did not find. And if they find you with the movie, they're going to kill you. He said you go get assassinated. So, is we in a parallel universe? Is could this movie crack the code? Could it be a glitch in the Matrix? Because apparently it's some truth to it for him to say what he said. So it's like, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. Like like they always say, it's always a little truth in a joke. It's always a little truth in the I'm just playing. And then notice he wearing dark shades inside a room. Why are you wearing dark shades inside a room with regular lightning? You can't see his eyes. That's a red flag. So you got to pay attention. Next, we're about to talk about the Berenstein Bears. Again, us 90s babies, we remember the Berenstein Bears, not the Berenstein Bears. Pay attention. Sinbad and Shazam is just one example of dozens. The most famous one is the, the children's book, The Bernstein Bears. This title of this children's book, The Bernstein Bears, this book I did read a bunch when I was a kid. So I had an idea about how it was spelled. And so I just had this kind of unconscious feeling of how it was spelled. And in this case, there was just a one letter change from Bernstein, S-T-E-I-N, to Bernstein, S-T-A-I-N. The easy answer is just that you may have overlooked it your entire life then that could definitely very well be true. But there is, there's another aspect of it that when I, for me, for instance, I think other people, when you see the A instead of the E, there's kind of like a, a feeling of like, that doesn't look right. Match it with the memories of, you, of me for looking at this book so many times and growing up with it. There's like this kind of dissonance, cognitive dissonance. Have you ever remembered something only to find out that you're wrong? Like the spelling of Berenstain Bears, which I did a whole Angry Nerd episode about. But uh, just to recap, many people remember the spelling as Berenstain with an E, only to find out later it's spelled Berenstain with an A. When I made the episode, I was fooling around. I was making entertainment. But I do remember it spelled with an E. I first noticed the correct spelling when I was reading one of the books to my daughter. I thought it was strange, but I probably hadn't touched a Berenstain Bears book in over 20 years, so after all that time, I just figured my memory was faulty. But then I heard the same thing from so many other people and learned that it was big on the internet and lots of people remember the alternate spelling. This is called the Mandela Effect, named after Nelson Mandela, who people falsely believe died in prison in the 80s. The term applies to all memories that turn out to be wrong. The man from the Monopoly games, Rich Uncle Pennybags, had a monocle, right? But no, actually he didn't. Curious George was always getting into trouble, swinging around by his tail. Oh wait. He didn't have a tail. Come on, no tail? Really? 
There's many interesting theories, some which suggest that false memories are proof of an alternate universe. So if you remember Berenstain with an A, you're from this universe. But all us who remember the E spelling, we crossed over from an alternate universe, sometime between our childhoods and now. So if you have a friend with a conflicting memory, then your friend isn't actually the same friend. The Mandela Effect has tons of examples in geography, food products, historical dates and events, but I'm gonna focus on movies and TV. There's a famous example that came up recently where tons of people remember a movie called Shazam with a genie played by the comedian Sinbad. Sinbad replied to all this and said, there's no such movie, it never happened. But then somebody found a picture of Sinbad in a genie costume, and it turned out he played a genie, but it was for a special TV broadcast where he was hosting the Ray Harryhausen movie, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger, on TNT. But anyway, this could have been the cause of some of the false memory. All right, so look, now y'all heard what he just said, right? He said a false memory. These people playing with us, man, they done gave it a whole definition, false memory. They say a false memory is something where some, where someone recalls something that did not happen or recalls something differently from the way it actually happened. So it's like these people really playing with us, man. They really telling us that the things we remember from our childhood, the things we remember seeing, touching, watching, they trying to tell us that it never existed and they telling us we have false memories. We have a lot of little false memories floating around in our memory bank, and we're probably not even aware of it, and it doesn't even matter. If they can even diagnose you and say that you have false memory syndrome. Like, they just making stuff up, man. It's like they trying to come up with anything to discredit the truth. When Sinbad said out his own mouth, they use mind control to make people forget about the movies. The man said it like his own mouth. The most famous one is the, the children's book, The Berenstain Bears. This title of this children's book, The Berenstain Bears, this book I did read a bunch when I was a kid. So I had an idea about how it was spelled. And so I just had this kind of unconscious feeling of how it was spelled. And in this case, there was just a one letter change from Bernstein, S-T-E-I-N, to Bernstein, S-T-A-I-N. The easy answer is just that you may have overlooked it your entire life. Th then that could definitely very well be true, but there's there's another aspect of it that when I, for me, for instance, and I think other people, when you see the A instead of the E, there's kind of like a, a feeling of like, that doesn't look right. Match it with the memories of you, the, me for looking at this book so many times and growing up with it. There's like this kind of dissonance, cognitive dissonance. Okay, so look, again, the Bearstein Bears, us 80s and 90s babies, we remember the book the Bernstein Bears, B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. Now they're trying to tell us that that never existed. They saying that it's called the Bernstein Bears, S-T-A-I-N. But I remember as a kid, I went to Holloway Elementary School. We had a library full of these books. It was called the Bernstein Bears. We even got proof they trying to tell us that it never existed. Okay, check this out. Look at this, Bastine Bears. Look, this is one of the original books. Look at this, clear as day. Look, look, right here. Look at that, Bastine. Look at this, we got a cassette tape and a book. Again, Bastine, S-T-E-I-N. So how the hell is they telling us it never exists when you got people with books and cassette tapes? Bear Steam, S-T-E-I-N. Come on, man. These people playing with us, man. Don't let these people play with your intelligence. They really trying us. They really trying us. Look at this. I can go even deep. I can go even deeper than this. Look. Look. I found this on Twitter. Barry Steen, S-T-E-I-N. He replying to them like, look, here's the proof, homie. So apparently I'm not the only one on this. I know I'm not the only one on this. Every kid that grew up in the 90s, we read these books. It was Barry Steen, S-T-E-I-N. Now we got these books floating around right here. Look at these. 
They didn't change the name on them. Now look. Bear Stain. S T A I N. Look. Bear Stain. Look. Bear Stain. Look at this right here, man. They even went out their way to Photoshop a floppy disk with bear stain on it. Like, come on, man. Us 90s babies, we knew what the floppy disk said, man. It was bear stain. It was never bear stain. My man's got a whole floppy disk right here, man. Like, they, they trying so hard to erase the bear stain. It was never bear stain. Look, we got another one right here. Bear Steen, S-T-E-I-N. This is another original book. Like, they can't tell us that we tripping. We know we not tripping. We know what we saw. We know what we read. We knew what we, we grew up on. Simple as that. Next, we got Jiffy Peanut Butter. They telling us that Jiffy never existed. They telling us Jiffy never existed. That's interesting because it was an episode on American Dad when the boy was in the store. Yeah, the boy was in the store on the aisle in the grocery store and he was standing in front of Jiffy Peanut Butter. Like, they put it in plain sight. They say Jiffy don't exist and it never did, but you can go on Google and pull up coupons, ads from newspapers and clippings from back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, hell, maybe even the 90s, and you will see the Jiffy peanut butter. You can even pull up a screenshot of the old Jiffy peanut butter jar with the knife in his hand. But they say he never existed because we having false memories. Yeah, okay. We all know Curious George had a tail. They trying to tell us he never had a tail. The original teddy bear had a tail. The new one don't. They got a whole game called Pen and Tail on George. The original book, he had a tail on him. Now these new Curious George books, he don't have a tail. Again, us 90s babies, we know Curious George had a tail because we read the books just like the Bernstein Bears. Just like Looney Tunes, Looney Tunes was T-O-O-N-S. Again, cartoons that we grew up watching as kids, as children, we know exactly what we seen. It was T-O-O-N-S. Now, it's T-U-N-E-S, like iTunes. Again, they telling us that the T-O-O-N-S never existed. When we can clearly go back and pull up proof that it was T-O-O-N-S. Remember Space Jam? Remember the old Toys R Us ads? The newspaper clippings? Everything. It was T-O-O-N-S. We all remember. We all remember. They even had the Tiny Toons. They even had the Tiny Toons. And the Tiny Toons was spelled T O O N. The Flintstones was F-L-I-N-S-T-O-N-E-S. They trying to tell us it's F-L-I-N-T-S-T-O-N-E-S. False. It never had two T's in it. It was always one. I grew up watching a show. I know what I'm talking about. Just like y'all know what y'all talking about. And all the other kids from the 90s, we know what we talking about. The Monopoly Man... He had the moniker on his eye. We all had the game. We played the game. Man, they got a whole doll with the moniker on his eye. They have a Monopoly doll. What's his name? Penny Bags? They have a doll of him with the moniker on his eye. Like, in plain sight. And this picture was from way back in the days. Everybody remembers the moniker on the eye because we all played the game. But they trying to play us, like, they trying to make it seem like it never existed. Another example of this effect is, of course, the name itself, named after Nelson Mandela. Some strongly remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 90s instead of 2013. Now, this example can be proven, but one thing that is impossible to prove is the memory itself. You can't disprove a person having the memory of it being the other way. You know what I mean? So for a person who has this memory that this thing is wrong, 
even if you show them that, look, it's this other way, for them, if the memory is not like that, it's not going to prove it to them. You know, they're going to say, okay, I get, I see what you're saying, but it feels totally wrong and it makes me feel kind of crazy to look at that A in the name. Okay, we back. So, Nelson Mandela. A lot of people remember Nelson Mandela dying in the late 80s, early 90s. It was said that he died in prison. But according to today's time, or should I say this timeline, he died in 2013. When clearly it was hundreds or millions of people that remember him dying in prison. This is what triggered the Mandela effect. According to the book, English Alive, it was said that he died July the 23rd, 1991, according to a book. I got a screenshot of the page from the book right here, as you can see. Many people say that they witnessed his funeral. They witnessed him dying in prison. So again, a glitch in the system, a glitch in the matrix, or is we in a, another dimension, an alternate reality? The same thing with us 90s babies. We clearly remember the Bernstein Bears. We remember Curious George with a tail. We remember Jiffy Peanut Butter. We remember Looney Tunes, T-O-O-N-S. Not T-U-N-E-S. You know, it's just the simple things like this. They're trying to say that we have false memories. We remember seeing Sinbad as the genie. And let's talk about Sinbad for a minute. So, the video that y'all saw where well, he was denying that he ever played the genie and also like they had the interview with his kids. They denied he ever played a movie. He ever played a genie in a movie. See, the thing about that is, he could be telling the truth. The reason why I say that, because if this is an alternate reality that we living in, the Sinbad from this timeline, from this dimension, he never played a genie movie. But the sin bad from our time, from our reality, he did. So maybe the sin bad from this timeline, which is the doppelganger, he never played in that movie. In this reality, Shaq played the genie and Kazam. But in our timeline, from our time, it was sin bad. But like they say, if the world really did destroy in 2012, and we was transported here to an alternate reality where everything is different, different and the opposite, then hey, that's proof in the that's proof in the pudding right there. So maybe he could be telling the truth. He maybe never, he probably never played that movie in this timeline, in this reality. But to see bad from our reality, he did play a movie. So, you know, it's a it's a double-edged sword. It could be either way. It could be either way. Because also in the interview, he did come back and said that he did play the genie. And, you know, he said that the government, they use mind control to make people forget about the movie. And, and uh, the government stepped in to help remove the movies from people, houses, and stores. So... It's 50 50. You never know. You never know. So, that's the end of this video. That's my take on the Mandela effect. If you like this video, man, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. This is my take on the Mandela effect. The hood conspiracy theories. Gone.